Part of uh, Troma's original business strategy was to own our negatives. Charlie Chaplin owned his negatives, and even though he uh, was uh, kicked out of this country and uh, blacklisted and persecuted, he died a rich man. Equally talented and equally brilliant was Buster Keaton, who did not own his negatives. He was, a, uh, a, a, a pro he was owned by MGM, and they ruined him and he died penniless. So um, we have accumulated a, a very large library of movies, both the movies we have made and instead of buying drugs and prostitutes, uh, well, uh, we, I guess we bought prostitutes, but instead, I guess we bought drugs, but instead of the usual, we, uh, whenever we had money, we would buy libraries of movies. So the, uh, the, when new technologies came in, we could benefit from that. When VHS arrived, uh, Troma had a, uh, a big library, and uh, when VHS arrived, every store in the country needed to fill up their shelves with movies and entertainment. My, um, um, uh, my circumcision home movies, the, uh, the, home mov the home movies, when VHS began, every store, VHS at its, uh, uh, when VHS arrived, there was such a, a clamor for, um, for uh, uh, movies and entertainment. Every store had to fill its shelves. The home movies of my circumcision could have probably gotten a huge uh, monetary advances uh, for the rights. Anything, anything that moved was needed to fill up the shelves of video stores. And Troma had a nice library, including The Toxic Avenger. So we uh, were taken to lunch. Uh, Vestron Video, Media Home Entertainment, the uh, great independent uh, video companies, and in fact even uh, Time Warner, Warner's uh, video company, would take us to lunch because they needed what they call product. Product to me are artichokes, but instead uh, we prefer to say art or movies or uh, entertainment. Uh, Troma was fortunate in that uh, we also made a decision early in the game to embrace VHS. We embraced video. Troma uh, also was uh, smart in that uh, we are a small company, a forward-looking company, movies of the future, and we embraced VHS and video cassettes uh, uh, immediately. We thought they were great. Meanwhile, the MPAA, uh, Jack Valenti, uh, the MPAA uh, run by Jack Valenti, peon of the uh, major uh, conglomerates, started to protest. They didn't want VHS. They used the argument that uh, fanboys would copy VHSs and exchange them among, among themselves, and the copyright laws would be ruined, and we'd all, uh, we'd all die of uh, bankruptcy or whatever. It was baloney. The, uh, the uh, giant conglomerates tried to throw a monkey wrench into all the new technologies. When a new technology like VHS, when a new technology like VHS comes into the world, the giant conglomerates who are slow to move, they throw a monkey wrench into it to try to hold it up. In this case, they sued. They created uh, uh, First Amendment uh, issues. They created piracy issues. They created a lot of phony baloney so that uh, the independents like Troma, who got into VHS early, would uh, be um, slowed down so that the giant conglomerates could then preempt and take over the uh, VHS market and continue uh, to have a, a giant uh, devil-worshipping international media cartel to control everything we see and hear and read and watch. Troma had a couple of good years when uh, um, uh, the, the uh, MPAA used the exact same argument today. The MPAA uses the exact same argument today against net neutrality on the internet. They say if there's net neutrality on the internet, we will be swamped with uh, piracy, the copyright laws will uh, be disintegrate our rights of, of intellectual uh, uh, copyright and... Uh, sorry. The MPAA... The MPAA to, th to this day uses the same... For the MPAA today uses the same phony baloney argument that uh, um, shit. Anytime there's new technology and the MPAA wants to throw a monkey wrench into it so that the major conglomerates can then take it over, they use the same argument. 
Today they say that net neutrality is going to lead to a flood of, of porno and pedophilia and God goat fucking who knows what and they say that they're going to that uh, uh, net neutrality will lead to the end of copyright and that all our intellectual rights will go down the drain and blah 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 they use the exact same argument against against VHS just so they could slow it down, impede it, stop the independents from having a, 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 a level playing field, and um, screw up uh, the public. And uh, they, to, the, to that extent, uh, they did eventually succeed. Home video, after all that blabbering about how home video was going to destroy copyright law and uh, uh, flood us with porno, uh, home video for many years, it probably still is the most uh, profitable segment of the mainstream conglomerate uh, um, marketplace. Troma uh, made uh, the Toxic Avenger. All our movies are original. All our movies are uh, breaking the rules. And Toxic Avenger was like no other. We could not find a theater to play it. They didn't get it. It was a funny, hilarious slapstick movie with gore, with sex, with police, with Nazis, and with a hideously deformed creature of superhuman size and strength. We finally got one theater in... Uh, uh, New York in Greenwich Village to play the movie there was a line around the block the day it opened somehow the public the public knew that the Toxic Avenger was worthwhile uh, from there uh, 2,000 screens and uh, eventually a huge huge uh, video cassette uh, success through Vestron Video Vestron Video was an independent video company that got into uh, VHS uh, long before this, the studios dared to do it and um, uh, Vestron Video embraced uh, Troma and the Toxic Avenger. They distributed uh, the Toxic Avenger, Blood Sucking Freaks, and quite a number of other uh, excellent Troma movies. Another video company which, which uh, also uh, successfully distributed uh, Troma movies was Media Home Entertainment. They also were pioneers in the field of VHS and they acquired the rights to the class of Newcomb High. After a somewhat successful uh, theatrical uh, run, uh, class of Newcomb High went to Media Home Entertainment for a nice advance and they told me they sold 450,000 video cassettes in those days at over $100 a piece. I think they were $139 dollars each so you can see they made a pretty penny uh, all right According to Vestron Video, The Toxic Avenger was the first movie of its type to prove that VHS could be a huge huge monetary uh, success. The Toxic Avenger According to Vestron Video, The Toxic Avenger was the first movie with uh, horror and gore and what you might call a genre movie to be released on VHS. In those days, uh, VHS was thought to be primarily uh, something for uh, Michael Jackson music videos and, and uh, Jane Fonda self-improvement videos. It, it really hadn't been determined that uh, movies were going to be the, uh, the prime uh, uh, source of uh, revenue. And uh, what made Toxic Avenger really special is that uh, none of the video companies dared to uh, put on uh, kind of genre movies. Vestron did take a big risk with Toxic Avenger, and um, it, it sold uh, hundreds of thousands of uh, VHS. And indeed, uh, to this day, uh, Troma fans remember the giant cutouts. There were life-size Toxic Avenger cutouts in uh, several thousand video stores with a, um, an image of Toxie and actual holding an actual mop. They would tape a real mop to the life-size uh, cardboard cutout in the video store. If you see the Toxic Avenger Part 3, The Last Temptation of Toxie, we actually put one of those uh, cardboard uh, Toxic Avenger stand-up uh, standees with the real mop in the scene and Toxie poses in front of it so the bad guys don't see him and then uh, suddenly the cardboard thing uh, comes to life but it's the real Toxic Avenger. Let me just see. Uh, yeah. Uh, the Toxic Avenger also was a huge, huge hit all over the world on VHS. It did not have a theatrical distribution. But the Toxic Avenger... Sorry, let's do it again. The Toxic Avenger had some theatrical distribution, uh, Canada, Australia, 
England uh, and a, a major distribution in France, uh, but it wasn't. Uh, uh, it didn't have the uh, the uh, theatrical success that it had in the States. However, it was an enormous, enormous VHS success uh, in Europe and Asia. In Japan, it had 120 prints too. By the way, 120 35 millimeter prints when the movie opened through Shojiku uh, Studios in Japan, and of course a huge uh, video success and uh, trauma thanks to the talk. Avenger changed the face of Japanese uh, uh, um, film viewing, really. Uh, there's a whole uh, the Toxic Avenger was the first uh, Japanese uh, the movie of that type to uh, burst upon the scene. In the international markets, the Toxic Avenger made quite an impact, uh, especially in Japan. The Toxic Avenger was huge in Japan. 120, I think 120 or 130 uh, 35 millimeter prints were distributed theatrically by Shojiku, and then the video, the home video, the VHS uh, success in Japan was enormous. And in, in, uh, from what has been written, the Toxic Avenger uh, changed the uh, home video and movie viewing in Japan and, and led to uh, these um, wonderful Japanese uh, movies that you see today that are uh, in that same uh, genre. Prior to that, the, uh, there was no tradition of low-budget uh, genre movies. And in fact, the first Toxic Avenger was so successful on VHS that we filmed the second Toxic Avenger in Japan. In fact, the first Toxic Avenger was so successful in Japan that we filmed the second Toxic Avenger in Japan. The first Toxic Avenger was so successful on VHS in Japan that we went to Japan to film the second Toxic Avenger. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry, keep going. Uh, in the rest of the world, the Toxic Avenger had limited edition, uh, no, sorry, in France, the Toxic Avenger also had a major theatrical release, did very well, it was called Toxic, and then uh, subsequently was released uh, in uh, uh, thousands of, st yeah, that's, not thousands, yeah, maybe, well, anyway, let me try that again. Um, as far as Europe goes, uh, the Toxic Avenger had uh, a great distribution campaign in uh, French theaters all over the country, uh, a reasonably decent uh, release in England uh, and uh, the rest of Europe, uh, although it was limited, very limited. And um, the, uh, however, the VHS was a sensation everywhere. And um, the Cannes Film Festival, the next year after the VHS release of the Toxic Avenger, the next year everyone at Cannes was bidding on uh, uh, paying for uh, advances to uh, get the rights to Toxic Avenger Part 2. We had no idea we were going to make Toxic Avenger Part 2, but uh, people at Cannes, uh, the buyers at Cannes, uh, heard uh, or created a rumor that we were shooting uh, Toxic Avenger Part 2 and there was a feeding frenzy, even though we was not even our idea to make a sequel. Uh, all right, so I guess... When Squeeze Play Waitress Stuck on You first turn on, those movies were quite original and quite unique and indeed were successful because they combined sex and slapstick comedy and a serious uh, a satire of serious issues in the newspapers. Uh, the Toxic Avenger, again, was unlike anything anyone had ever seen and indeed it made a huge impact left a huge uh, 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 footprint uh, on the cultural world with people like Peter Jackson and Quentin Tarantino and James Gunn and Eli Roth and uh, e and uh, Hayao uh, Miyazaki and uh, of course um, uh, Takashi Miike and Gaspar Noé and and uh, many many of today's mainstream uh, film directors like uh, Guillermo del Toro etc etc. So indeed the Toxic Avenger was a seminal movie and uh, it probably was our most successful movie on VHS. The Class of Newcomb High comes in a close second because it also was a huge huge success uh, both uh, theatrically in certain places like the United States and parts of Europe but uh, on VHS the Class of Newcomb High was an enormous success. Both those movies were made for under half a million dollars and uh, were um, extremely successful for the distributors around the world. Uh, that doesn't mean we got uh, that much money. <laughs> If you know the movie business. Uh, that was really good. All right. Uh, let's see. Heavily pre-cut. Yeah. 
One of the problems that Troma had uh, when it was coming along was the MPAA rating board. The MPAA rating board is owned and controlled by the giant uh, cartel of devil-worshipping international media conglomerates, such as uh, Rupert Murdoch's uh, News Corporation, Sumner Meyerson's uh, Viacom, which owns Paramount and MTV and all that blah blah. So they they control the MPAA. These we don't have a government censorship. We have an industry. Uh, car cartel controlled censorship organization which has a double standard in my opinion they treat the independent companies differently from the majors a typical example of this was the fact that the toxic Avenger in order to get an R rating and there was no way to get into movie theaters without an R rating in those days in the mid 80s or early 80s mid 80s the uh, in order to get an R rating, and you could not play in movie theaters in the United States without an R rating, the uh, MPAA made us cut, I think, almost 20 minutes out of the movie, 20 minutes out of a, a work of art, uh, and so that we could get the R rating, so that we could get into movie theaters. In France, <laughs> where the uh, age group was 13 and up, as opposed to the R rating, which is 16 and up. In France, they cut 30 seconds. So, and that was the government censorship. So it gives you a sense of how the MPAA is responsible for uh, destroying many, many, many independent movie companies. Um, and speaking of another VHS uh, situation, the MPAA uh, ruined uh, Troma's war. Uh, that we could not uh, effectively distribute it theatrically because in order to get the R rating, the MPAA made us totally obliterate the movie. They cut out punches, they cut out uh, uh, um, bullet hits, they cut out uh, almost any kind of action that was in Troma's War at the same time as... Um, they cut out almost any kind of uh, action in Troma's War at the very same time that they permitted much worse serious action in uh, Die Hard. The, viol the so-called violence that the MPAA made Troma cut out of Troma's War, things like punches, uh, com comedy, uh, the, the cartoon violence that was cut out of Troma's War, things like punches, things like uh, uh, bullet hits, things like uh, high falls, men on fire, stuff like that, all that stuff was left in movies made by the major studios. Check out Die Hard, which has serious knees being blown up, serious violence. Then check out the director's cut, which you can get on DVD. Uh, uh, check out Tr Troma's War director's cut, and check out the, uh, the, the violence compared to uh, Die Hard. Our violence is uh, mainly cartoony, and the MPAA destroyed Troma's War. They destroyed something I spent uh, three years on with Michael Herz, three years of our life, and then they destroyed it. And when the VHS came out, um, of course, uh, since there was hardly any theatrical distribution, because it was unwatchable, the R-rated version was unwatchable, we, uh, we got screwed. The public, the Toxic Avenger, Class of Newcomb High had been a huge success even with the unfair edits that the MPAA had made uh, us uh, perform, even with these crappy R-rated versions playing in the movie theaters, Toxie and the class of Newcomb High were big successes. So when it came time for Troma's War, the public was really interested. They were excited. And then when they showed up to see Troma's War and they got this kind of G-rated abortion, they, they, they were saying, oh, Wow, Troma, you cut, you're trying to go, 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 go mainstream. They thought we were trying to make a G-rated movie and go mainstream. The MPAA, we could not get into the movie theaters unless we had an R rating. The MPAA made us cut out every possible bit of action in that movie. Uh, and ruined uh, the uh, economic. Any other company would have been put out of business because most movie companies uh, get loans from banks and they're heavily mortgaged. Most movie companies are leveraged. Most movie companies don't have a pot to pee in when they're independent. We luckily uh, were smart enough to put up our own money and uh, did not take loans so we could continue. They did not succeed in putting Troma out of business. And later on, the director's cut of Troma's War was very, very successful on uh, cable television and TV and, uh, of, of course, the, um, the DVD markets. Uh, hold on a second. Uh, 
the um, the uh, the Toxic Avenger was uh, censored in England. Uh, I think uh, 15 minutes may have been taken out of it, so uh, it was not a great version to distribute it. But at least it was government doing it, and I think they were a lot more even-handed. I think they cut just as much out of major releases as they did. Uh, they probably were a bit. From my experience, uh, just uh, anecdotally, the British censorship uh, system was uh, fucked up, but not as badly fucked up as the uh, elitist MPAA uh, system. Uh, the British censorship system did uh, come after uh, M Mary Blow. F what was it? Uh, the British said that probably the biggest crime the British censorship system ever did was uh, to try to censor uh, Life of Brian and the and the Monty Python uh, movies. They had some uh, woman. Uh, Mary Blowjob or something, I can't remember what her name was, uh, who was r kind of uh, active and running the uh, politics and uh, they actually, uh, can you imagine uh, cutting up uh, Life of Brian? Uh, it's absurd. But um, other than that, uh, the British censorship uh, system was a lot fairer to people and uh, companies uh, like uh, Lloyd Kaufman and Troma than the American system. And in Canada, by the way, Canada, Canada, our neighbor, the United States, uh, sorry, the United States cut out, uh, the MPAA uh, cut out, as I mentioned, uh, 20 minutes or so of Toxic Avenger. In Canada, right next door to us, if I recall correctly, they cut out only 45 seconds. And that was the Canadian government censorship. So go figure. Tell me the MPAA isn't a double standard uh, a machine to put the independent people out of business and uh, promote the uh, cartel that's running the entertainment industry. Certainly in those days, that was the case. And Canada and U.S., the com the, the, and if you compare the Toxic Avenger R-rated versions between the U.S. and Canada, it proves my point. <coughs> Uh, just say more about censorship. Okay. Uh, uh, Michael Hers and I have been making movies for 40 years and we think censorship is idiotic. Uh, obviously parents and responsible people should shield their kids from uh, objectionable materials. But if the uh, Rupert Murdoch owned CNN can show body parts at 8 in the morning, if uh, the Today Show can show disgusting, uh, uh, trivial uh, sex and violence and reality crap at uh, 8 o'clock while children are having their, uh, their uh, sugar infested uh, Kellogg's uh, Frosted Flakes, uh, then um, the, the, the trauma should be uh, allowed to make movies without any form of censorship as long as children are kept away. And, uh, uh, it's absurd that uh, government and these large corporations uh, step in. And the only reason they step in is the same reason the government stepped in to blacklist people. The government and the big uh, studios conspired to blacklist people in the 50s because their contracts were too, too uh, um, um, uh, rich. The studios were on, the, uh, on their heels because television was coming in and the big studios were in trouble. How do they get out of their contracts? They can't fire people, they've got contracts. They're paying out millions of dollars to people. How do you do it? You, you use the loyalty clause. There were loyalty clauses in those contracts. So that's the way you blacklist people. You, you say they're un-American and you prove it with some um, bull honky about they attended a meeting of communists back in 1922 or something. That's what it's all about. The censorship is political, economic. It has nothing to do with protecting the public. The MPAA and the government censorships are not there to protect the public. They're there to protect the cartel. The censorship boards are there to protect the entrenched, the entrenched uh, entities who control the media. And it's true today in China. It's more true than ever in the United States. And by the way, this uh, supposed fight against piracy, this has nothing to do with uh, protecting the rights of the independents. The major studios are trying to get the independents to contribute to their uh, anti-piracy fight uh, so they can protect themselves. They're not going to do anything to protect. The FBI has, done, has never lifted a finger to protect uh, trauma movies getting ripped off. That is for sure. Uh. 
the elements that make trauma <laughs> the elements that make trauma movies successful worldwide is that uh, our movies are one of a kind our movies deal with political and social themes in an entertaining and and a provocative manner we don't take ourselves seriously but we take our movies very seriously when the environment uh, was not even on on Al Gore's uh, mind uh, well before he invented the internet uh, we we came along with the toxic avenger my wife and I would go camp there was uh, detritus from McDonald's, non-biodegradable plates and cups everywhere, in the swamps, in the forests, all over this big blue marble of ours. And uh, that led eventually to uh, the, creating the Toxic Avenger, whose only uh, uh, superpower is that he can jump and uh, he's got a mop to clean up. He's an environmental superhero with the class of Newcomb High that's got one foot in the... Uh, the fight against uh, poorly built nuclear power plants. The, a nuclear power plant was being built right next door to New York. Good God, with l bad labor, with drunken uh, union laborists, uh, labor uh, laborers, with um, uh, crappy cement. They were so greedy. The people building the uh, nuclear power plant right next to New York City were so greedy. They were using <laughs> uh, drunken laborers and and crappy cement. And this is a nuclear power plant can blow up the. You know, we're worried about 9/11 happening again. You're more uh, more likely to get blown up by uh, by corruption uh, of our own uh, elites. Um, what also makes trauma movies uh, so successful is they're uh, they're entertaining. They're entertaining, they're subversive, and they're disruptive. And they change the world just a little tiny bit. And that, uh, I think, is what art should be. Art should reflect the uh, spirit and heart of the uh, people who make it. And in this case, the spirit and hearts of Michael Herz and Lloyd Kaufman are reflected therein. Uh, whatever they are, good or bad. And um, we have built up a wonderful, very loyal, and uh, extremely active uh, fan base all around the world. Uh, Troma, I would say, is the classic uh, cult uh, movie studio. We're in our 40th year, and uh, in large part, uh, it's because we make movies of the future. We do what we believe in, and we have embraced a new technology. We don't fear to tread where the uh, big uh, cartels are afraid to uh, to tread. We got into DVD before the uh, the machines were in people's houses. How stupid was that? Uh, but uh, we loved DVD. We saw it as a magnificent uh, uh, piece of technology, as a magnificent uh, way to uh, view entertainment. And uh, Troma was in there way before uh, the studios were. At any rate, to conclude, I think what's key is that if you're going to be involved in, a, in an art form that is also a business form, uh, to thine own self be true, uh, a phrase coined by uh, one William Shakespeare, who, as you know, wrote that uh, best-selling book, 101 Money-Making Screenplay Ideas, otherwise known as Hamlet. In other words, uh, do what you believe in, and it doesn't matter what, whatever new technology comes along, you will succeed. The Toxic Avenger has just come out on Blu-ray, and it's coming out all over the world. And our fans all over the world probably have bought every iteration of the Toxic Avenger, all the different versions, and they keep buying them and buying them and buying them. And uh, that's what uh, makes uh, Troma different from uh, the uh, mainstream, uh, whose uh, movies are mainly uh, baby food. You can live on baby food, but it's uh, pretty boring. Uh, the Troma movies are... Uh, the jalapeno peppers on the cultural pizza and uh, and uh, there are many people who want jalapeno peppers on their cultural pizza but it all starts with good scripts with uh, good spirit and a love of uh, cinema uh, and uh, whether it's theaters VHS cable TV or a DVD or VOD or implants in the head uh, from Google brain surgery whatever uh, it's all about making your own damn movie and making it good That's all that.